Wonderful Jesus, hallelujah. How many feel real good after this good singing tonight and just praise? Let's see then you just love to come out and just worship God in the beauty of holiness. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We're just we're very grateful to be here tonight and see so many beautiful faces that came out to worship the Lord and you no know, praise good last night and this today I was just praying. Along those lines, and think about some of those songs, praise the Lord, that we used to sing and say that the Lord has blessed us tonight. Amen. I thank God for what I feel here tonight. Amen. Praise God. You know, praise God, long back in the years when me and Sister Mary got saved, we couldn't hardly wait to, praise God, to get to the house of the Lord and just give our testimony. Praise the Lord. We will have all that good music sometime, praise God. But it sure sound good to us. Amen. Sometimes people just had pot legs, rub wood, and they get together, praise God, and we just have a great time. And Satan, we thank God for you, praise God, that came out tonight. And amen. So, all right, I'd like to just talk a little bit tonight. Hope I can encourage someone. How many realize tonight that we are living in the last days? As I was praying last night and began to seek the Lord, pray say, a burden came over my heart when I began to think about the day and the time that we're living in now. And it doesn't seem like too many people are concerned about what is going on. Now, praise God, the church was placed here to carry on the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You often heard me say, because we are to make disciples. God then sent his son down here and praised God, and his son gave a life just so we could get saved and just sit down. Amen. Praise God when he said, he, for God so loved the world, he was concerned about the whole world. Amen. And when he left, there was still a big job to be done. And that job was left up to the church. That include us tonight, amen, is to really get busy. Praise God, amen. In order, you know, really to be saved, I believe a, a saved person should have a burden for lost souls. Amen. Do we realize we only have one soul? Each person has one soul. And if you lose that soul, that's it. Amen. When we leave this earth, there's only two places to go. Praise God. You go to one or the other, and that's heaven or hell. Now, the Bible describes hell. I mean, heaven is a beautiful place to be desired and to go. But then when Jesus in the Bible describes hell, it's a terrible place. Amen. And I don't believe that nobody in their right mind would really want to go there. But for the lack of concern, many people are drifting that way. Now, I'm going to know for me a scripture, and I preach from this scripture many, many times, but I just want to kind of talk it out tonight, praise the Lord, and I'll use this sermon as signs of the time. The signs of the time. Now, when Jesus left for praise God, he gave us some signs to look for. And when we see these signs, he said, look up, thy redemption draweth now. Amen. So it's really something to think about. But as I was praying last night, I was thinking about, praise God, America and with such prosperity in America, amen, that we, we, we aren't concerned about what really taking place. Now, I pray that some of you pray you're going to consider yourself having very much, but I've been in places where pregnant people would look on you as 
a millionaire, somebody that really has, in fact, they feel like everybody in America is millionaires. Brother Prager, we are blessed far beyond measures, and we don't realize it. I've been in places, praise the Lord, where they still pray and make cement in trawl and carry them in buckets on their head to pull bridges and things. Asphalt in a trough. I've been in places where some people never own a pair of shoes. Amen. People talking about winning the world through television. There are some places, unless and lately, because the people didn't even have a radio. They were completely set off from places like America. They're not even aware of what's going on. Amen. They're that far behind. And we are blessed. Amen. But we take so much for granted. Amen. As I was saying, I believe it was Sunday night. Then we want to try to get into the message. I don't intend to hold you long, but I just want you to think. We are blessed. Amen. Sister Mary can tell you, praise God. One of the fellows, praise God, that I missed in that part of India. And you heard Bishop Kill talk about how I had to sleep on straw and hard boards to preach the gospel. Well, they had the privilege to come to America. And we invite them to our house. And they spent the night with us. Even though it was difficult for us to talk because we couldn't understand one other language. But praise God, they, they let us know they didn't realize. I, I didn't think much of it because I was glad to go and take the gospel. But they were so stirred to see where I lived and what type of bed. I slept and they said, you mean to tell me this man left this type of place and bed and come and preach the gospel to us? Amen. I never thought much of it, but they were so appreciated. And amen, praise God. And Sister American bad witness to this, but we invite them to the table, praise God, and we have plenty. We throw way more food than a lot of people have to eat. And we notice, praise the Lord, they didn't waste nothing. If the husband had too much left, the wife would take it and eat it. And if she had anything left, the children would take it. They didn't throw away anything. But just look at the average of us. Each one of us, praise God, in the morning, each one of us, praise God, have a different breakfast most of the time. Amen. Some want cornflakes, some want grits. And something else. Amen. Eat half of it, leave it there on the table. And I was listening to a minister, I believe it was from Africa the other day. He said, over here, we pray prayers. He said, but where I come from, so we pray to survive. We pray for food because part of the time we don't have food to eat. We have to pray for food to eat to survive. Now take a look at that. That's a different than what we have here. I mean, we throw away more food than these people, praise God, have. But the question is, as I was praying, sick along, how long will America be able to prosper like this? How long are we going to be so unthankful? There's something to think about. Amen. These are the last days. We want you to get your Bible. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. I'm not going to try to shout you tonight. I just want to kind of talk. And I want to kind of make you think. Say, we need to get busy. Matthew 24 and 1 says, and Jesus went out. And Jesus went out. And departed from the temple. And departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him. And his disciples came to him. For to show him. For to show him. The buildings of the temple. The building of the mind. Look what a beautiful building this is. Read. And Jesus said unto them. And Jesus said unto them. See ye not all these things. See ye not all these things. Verily. Verily. I say unto you. I say unto you. There shall not be left. There here. shall not be left. Here, here, one stone, one stone upon, upon another, 
that shall not, that be, torn shall not be torn down. Now think what how beautiful a miracle is. But how long will it be before, pray God, destruction come in here? You may read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, "Tell us, tell us, when shall these things be? When shall these things be?" They was concerned about what Jesus said, but you know we're living in a damn time. We don't pay the message in the teaching. All the word is going forward, but as Herman Euler said, we're not listening. We're not paying any attention. I don't care what the pastor said. Now that's something we realize there's a lot of preachers pretty good just they don't preach making merchandise out of people, but there are preachers that's preaching the truth. Trying to get you to see the truth, but we just don't pay it any attention. Read. Tell us. Tell us. When shall these things when be? When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign? And what shall be the sign? Of thy coming. Of thy coming. And then and of the end of the world. And the end of the world. Now, they were concerned about the, Jesus was already there then talking to him, but he was, had told them about he was coming back. Amen. And Jesus is coming back, and they wanted to know what would be the signs of the time. Read. And Jesus answered. And Jesus answered. And said unto them. And said unto them. Take heed. Take heed. That no man deceive you. Now, this is a warning. The word take heed means to pay attention. But how many people today are paying attention? I don't care what the pastor said, what the man of God said, what the word of God said. People is made up in their mind and miracle. They're going to do what they want or when they want them. But I want you to know, I want to call your attention. This thing is winding up. Amen. Amen. And as I preach a message, one of the greatest problems in the world has ever known. It's going to take place. There's not going to be one saint in it. When the rapture take place, suddenly people are going to realize that they need to be saved. Amen. And they're going to be running, trying to find a place, but it's going to be too late. The saints will be gone. Now, the Bible said he's coming as a thief in the night. That means that we're not going to know when Christ is going to come. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in other words, at a flash of the battle of the eye, Jesus would appear in the mirror there and catch away the saints and be gone. And the rest would be left here. I preach a message, where will you hide when all hell break loose on the face of this earth? You think we're having something now. You wait to pray God that the praying folks have left, the church folks have left. God going to teach these people a lesson. I mean, all hell is going to break loose on this earth. And then it's going to be bad to, to suffer hell on earth and then have to die and go to hell. All you got to do is read, praise God, over in the book of Revelation about the thing that's going to come to pass on this earth. I believe as I just said, this earth is going to reel and rock like a drunk man. Amen. God's going to make men suffer in agony and in pain. Then they have to die and go to hell. So he's warning. Jesus never said, take heed that no man deceive you. And how many times we'll preach this, but people don't pay you any attention. Amen. Now listen, beloved, it means something to be saved. Not just casually. Oh, I'm saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost. That's a Bible word here. But as I was saying Sunday night, I've been in places where people were afraid to stand up in the congregation and acknowledge I accept Christ. Why? Wow, they're bound by these different type gods. And these different gods, and praise God, forbid them to acknowledge Christ. And would you believe it? It's, it's, it's coming here in America. In fact, it's already in America now. But we failed to take heed. Amen. All right. Christ has been taken out of high school. We preach it, and it's just a byword. But stop and think. 
They're forbidding our children to pray in school. You can do anything else, but don't mention Christ. Right. Harry Potter and all this mess and Susan, witchcraft, all of this stuff, condoms and all of this stuff, you can have it in the school, but don't mention Christ. But how many are paying attention? Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, I know what's happening. Pray that we're not paying anything in attention, praise God, and or oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But I want you to know the devil is more powerful than you think. You can get wrapped up in these ungodly religion and can't hardly get a loose. Amen. So while you're in your right mind, you need to get in Christ and get that and get anchored in Christ. Amen. Jesus wouldn't, he said, take heed that no man, there are deceivers out there. And these deceivers will come acting just like Christ. Read the next verse. For many shall come, For many shall come in my name. Say, I am Christ. And shall deceive them. They're going to be using the name of Christ. For many shall come in my name. Saying. Saying. I am Christ. I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Now listen, beloved. This is already in America. It's already in America. Amen. Our government is changing. Fast. Amen. They're taking the Ten Commandments out of the State House. But we don't, we're not paying it any attention. Oh, that's, that's nothing. Now they're talking about taking in God we trust off of our money. One thing after another. The, God, the devil is taking over. And we're saying we're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And what are we doing about it? We won't have come to church. We won't have pay our tithes. We don't care what the preacher said. And I want everybody here to break a second Sunday night for communion. Hmm. The won't ever think about it. Why? Because they're not paying anything in attention. When the Bible said obey them that have a ruler over you. We don't pay these things any attention. Amen. And it's going to catch us unaware. Amen. All right, praise God. Get me, praise God. Hold that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. You know, we live in a day and time there's a rebellion going on. We do what we want to do when we want. The way we want. We got people that have their own religion now. They're going to heaven their own way. All right, read. And God has set some in the now church. Now listen what the Bible says. And the Bible says, and God, not man, God has set some in the church. First. First. Apostles. Apostles. Secondarily. Secondary. Prophets. Prophets. Thirdly. Teachers. Teachers. After that miracle. After that miracle. Then gifts of healing. Then gifts of healing. Helps. Helps. Governments. Diversity of time. Hold that, that, that word, government, government. You know what that means? That means rules. That's right, amen. God is the first one that established rule and government, order. So when we get saved, we don't just run around here like a chicken with a head cut off. God put rules in the church, amen. And these rules, God expects us to obey them. God put men in place. Amen. Now as a greater educated man as Paul was. Paul, God demanded he take orders from just a normal Christian born again child of God. Amen. Now a lot of people talk about God, uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh. It's plain. It's right there in the scripture. A messenger of Satan. That's the thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan. Now the Bible said you reap what you sow. 
Mention that little bread along with by every word that proceed out of the mouth. Let's don't forget these. these we overlook these little words. We call them small words. We overlook them. Take heed that no man is seen. We overlook it. We stumble over it. Mention that little bread along with by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. God means that. Amen. Everything God put in this book is important. James said, do you think the scripture said in vain? So that doesn't mean that we can just pay attention to some word and overlook the others. Amen. All right, praise God. Now, praise God. God put government in the church. Amen. Now, praise God. He said, you reap what you sow. You can't get away with it. And, and Paul defines it. Whatsoever you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap in the flesh. What you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap in the spirit. We quote this all the time trying to get you to see it's important to sow. It's important to plant seed. And what type, pay attention, what type of seed you sow. And not so when it reap, pray you can rejoice in the reaping. Amen. Now, pray God, you go out there and get in a fight. Pray God, what you do in the world, get in a fight and you get a scar all down. And when you get saved, that scar is still there. Amen. That scar going to be there till you die. You, you, you reap that in the flesh. Amen. So you have to be very careful what you sow. All right. Now, pray God, when you really read that, praise God, when God, Jesus knocked Paul down. Now, Jesus saw something good in Paul. Now, he took Paul and spread it the apostles. Pray God, he told them going all over the world and preach the gospel. They was in John and said, fellowship in Jerusalem. So it took trial. It's sad sometimes it takes trial to scatter us to get us where God wants us. Well, when Paul started breathing out threatening, then they began to run different places and preach the gospel. And after that, then God turned around and saved Paul. Amen? But yet, praise God, even though he was, he was a great educator, amen, I got to show him how he had to be obedient. So he sent him down to Ananias' house. Just an ordinary man. And told Paul to go down on Straight Street. He, he had him on a conviction here. He could have told him exactly what he wanted him to do. But he said, you go down on Straight Street in the house of Judah. And there'll be a man who'll tell you what to do. And then he took, went down to Ananias' house. He told Ananias to go where Paul was. And Ananias was praying because they got the message. Paul was headed that way. And brother, he was, he was a bad fella. He said, I've heard of him. But Jesus said, oh, he's praying now. I've saved him. He's praying. He said, I'm going to show him how he will have to suffer much for my name's sake, the messenger of Satan. Just because you get saved, you ain't going to run and hide from it. You, and Paul suffered more than any of the disciples. Right? Don't this just, amen. amen? Because look what he put out. Look how he persecuted the church. Amen. I'm going to show how he's going to suffer much for my name's sake. So don't think you're going to pray to do your dirt and then run in here and hide and everything going to be okay. What you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap it in the flesh. What you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap in the spirit. But thank God when Paul got saved, he got saved. Amen. Amen. He was saved from the sole of his head to the sole of his feet. Amen. And when he said, I sought the Lord three times about this. All this persecution, I sought the Lord. And God said, my grace is sufficient. Amen. So a message was a thorn in the flesh. When you read back, praise God, and search out thorn in the flesh. Praise God. Go back in the Old Testament when they went over to the promised land. God told them, said, drive the Canaanites out. Don't there be a thorn in your flesh. Oh, no, they're going to be pricks. They're going to be trials in your flesh. So pray that it was a trial. Amen. I'm not moving this. You got to suffer. Reap what you. So Paul just got made up his mind. Pray that I caught all things in loss that I might gain Christ. And he just said forward. So you got to make up in your mind. Listen, this is what I want to get to tonight. Saints, this is time for us to make up in our mind that we're going to do the will of God. We don't have time to play around. Jesus is soon to come. Take heed what, that no man deceive you. Amen. 
Did he go on down in there and begin to tell you what's, what's going to take place? Let's, let's read that. Come on. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And you shall hear war. Now listen to what he said. All right. In the last day, they were asking about what shall be the signs of the time. You shall hear a wall and rumors of wall. See that you be not Now listen, trouble. ain't this what's going on now? Amen. Amen. Well, they're not fighting. They're talking about fighting. Amen. And we're in one of the biggest messes that we have been in right now. Amen. How can we win a war and we don't know who's our enemy? Amen. We done tried it twice and it didn't work. Now they're over there again. How can you win a war when you don't know what your, who your enemy is? And praise God, if you would stop to think and we need just to take heed what you hear, you need to stop and think. Now just think about what shape those poor boys is in. Amen. They don't know who the enemy, the enemy could be standing beside them or behind them or in front of them because they all look alike. Amen. Then if I shoot the wrong person, uh, America's going to court martial me. So we need to pray for those boys. Those boys are in a bad fix. And our government has put them in that state. Amen. You don't know who's your enemy. And I believe Sister Murphy told me the other day, praying for the head of the police for coming to find out he's with the other folks. Bush can't tell them apart. Colin Powell can't tell them apart. You can't tell them apart. Amen. So this is the day and the time we're living in. Now we, we take these things lightly, but Jesus said these are the things that's going to come to pass. And and we don't know. He said, this is just the beginning of sorrow. So Saint today there was a time for us to get stirred. And be prayerful and see God and get about our Father's business. It's now. Amen. But we go out there, we eat the wrong thing, and then we get sick. Oh, pray for me. I need a miracle. And the place is seeking God. All right, read. And you shall hear wars. And you shall hear a wall. And rumors of wars. And rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. S listen to what he's telling the saints. See that you be not troubled. Now we shouldn't let these things disturb us, but we sure can't pray God to pass them up. Only reason pray God we, we, we can live peaceful, we don't have to be on the Lord's side. Amen. Now let me stop here and put something else in here. I think we need to quit trying to get people to talk in tongues and get them to receive the power of God in their lives. It's not enough just to get saved. Amen. Are you listening to me? Well, we don't got that. Well, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But what about, do you have the power in your life? Amen. Now, this is what the church needs today. Is the power of God in our lives. Amen. Some of us can't go through nothing. Because we don't have no power. Folk look at us finally. We get up and want to lead a church. Then talking about you say. Folk talk about you. You get mad. Lead a church. But the Bible says do hardness as a good soldier. We need to get the power of God. I believe it's Luke 10 and 19. said, Behold, I give you I mean power to stand, to endure, to resist the enemy, and preach the gospel of deliverance. Cast out devils. Behold, I give you power with the power to tread upon serpent. Read that from Luke 10 and 19. We need some power to come to church. We don't even have enough power to come to church, let alone cast out devils. We come home tired and leave a little thing. I'm tired. Don't feel like going. You don't even have enough power to come to church. Amen. These are evil days. Amen. The devil is not playing. He'll wear you out. 
Well, if he find out pray that he can keep you away from church with an excuse of being tired, he's going to make you tired every night. Or he's going to put something in your way. Pray. You got to make up your mind you're not going to let these little things hinder you. Amen. So you got to learn how to press. Everything's not going to be easy all the time. Amen. Jesus suffered. We're going to have to suffer. If Christ suffered in the flesh, the Bible said, arm yourself likewise. But listen to what he said. Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power. To tread. To tread. On serpents. On serpents. And no, serpents. no, wait a minute. Now that serpent ain't going to just let you walk on him. Just lay down. Oh, come on, walk on me. You ain't going to just, just throw up both hands and, oh, uh, y'all, okay, you can just walk on me. It's going to be a fight. Amen? But praise God, when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, with a mind made up and determined that we are going to do the will of God. Amen? We're going to press. Regardless of the circle, and it takes power to do this. Read. I give unto you power. I give unto you power. To tread on serpents. To tread on serpents. And scorpions. And scorpions. And over all the power and of the enemy. And over all the power of the enemy. Who is our enemy? It's the devil. That evil force that comes against us to say we can't do it. We're not going to do what God told us to do. Pray for the Bible says we have power over that evil force. Amen. Amen. Then we're going to pray the least little thing we're going to give up. Acts 1, they said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come up on every I was saying, praise God, the tongue is, is not the Holy Ghost, the evidence that the Holy Ghost has made is arrival, but we need to seek that power. Amen. Jesus taught those disciples, praise God, to cast that devil, to preach the gospel, to be fearless. Amen. Amen. This is way God wants us to be determined to come together. Amen. Now God going to have leadership. We have to learn to obey leadership. Amen. And pray we have to learn the basis of anything that we undertake to do. We have to learn the basis. When you're going to service, they give you basic training. Amen. You have to learn the basics. And the same thing about the work of the Lord. You've got to learn the basic. we got some people coming here who want, want to try to go too fast. But you've got to learn the basics. Learn how to be obedient. Learn how to take an order. Learn how to endure things. How to take things. How to go through. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. We're God's soldiers. We're an army of the Lord. Amen. We have to be properly trained. We have to be taught. We are taught how to endure, how to go through. They, they give you this. I don't have time to go through it all, but in basic training, they teach you how to endure, how to suffer. They don't tell you, teach you not to get wounded because you're going to get wounded. But they try to teach you how to survive even though you are wounded. Amen. First God, in the same way serving God. Amen. We can't give up every time we get a little pain or a little this or that. Amen. You should feel that you are part of the body of Christ. I got to be there. Yeah. Pastor Mary need me. Uh, Pastor so and so need me. I want to be there. Even if I don't, you don't need me, I want to be there. Amen. And we need to get concerned. These are the last days about winning souls for the Lord. Amen. Read. Read Matthew. And ye shall hear wars. And ye shall hear wars. And rumors of wars. And rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. See that you be not troubled. Listen, we kind of just getting upset because of what's going on. Now, I pray uh, 911 was a sad occasion. Amen. People lost their loved ones. Amen. Praise God. And, and it, it really hurt us to our heart. But it didn't deserve it. Uh, those people got a miracle grip with fear. Everybody's not saved. They're gripped with fear. Amen. This country is gripped with fear. Right. Amen. They have a little thing. They jumping. 
But well, we're saints of God. We're not worried because we know God's going to take care of us. Then if we should die, we're going on to be with the Lord. So be not in trouble. For all these things must come to pass. These things is going to come to pass, beloved. We haven't seen anything yet. Read. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation. Uh, the, what we seen it. For nations shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom, kingdom. against kingdom. And thou shall be famous. Thou shall be famous. And pestilence. All right. This 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 what I want you to think on. Now. Amen. It, uh, the average person think it couldn't happen to America. It couldn't happen to us. We got plenty of food. This is attitude that one take. I just want you to think. It can't happen to us. Or can it? Look at Haiti down there. Another country. It can happen to us just like it happened to them. Amen. We are blessed because of the Lord. Not because of our goodness. But because of the Lord. But if we continue to live as a whole, and put it this way, this way Daniel looked at it when they're down in Babylon. Even though Daniel had not committed sin, but he repented for all Israel as God to forgive us. Amen. All right, I will speak in those terms. If we keep living the way we're living, the Bible says righteousness is also a nation, but sin is a reproach. Now, the only reason I believe that God has spared America to this extent because of the favoritism that she showed Israel. Because God said, if you bless Israel, I'll bless you. But with, uh, with this witness that America is condoning now, God's not going to hold that wrath off too long. In fact, we're seeing a little of it now. 9-11 was some of it. Look what's happening in Florida. Then this evening, they're talking about other earthquakes, praise God, on the West Coast. Tornadoes and fires and floods in the midst of America. Do you know it doesn't take long for us to wake up and we won't have a bite to eat and nowhere to go? God controls everything. So what we need to do is wake up and seek God. That God will bless us. Read. But nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence. Okay, famine, there shall be famines. And pestilence. The word pestilence means sickness and disease. Who have heard of the mad cow disease from not long ago? Where did it come from? Different other type of disease is coming in now. And there's supposed to be some type of flu is headed this way now, they say it's terrible. We need to stop and think. Man does not control this world. It's still, God holds it in the palm of his hand. He can do what he want or when he want. Him. And he ran on unjust just like he do the just. So pray good with me. The word person means sickness and disease. The signs of the time. And earthquakes, they're getting bigger and bigger and closer and closer together. It may be next in Dallas, we don't know. In diverse places, listen to what he's saying, all of these are the beginning of sorrow. Saint, if there ever was a time for us to draw near to God, it's now. But then we say, it can't happen to us. That's Tornado Alley. Maybe it's been Tornado Alley, but God may decide to come right by your house this time. Mm -hmm. And look at how helpless man can be when God begin to move. Man can't control the wind. He can't control the fire when it got a, He can't control the water when it got a, and He can't control disease. God can take, take grasshoppers and destroy a whole nation. A bunch of ants. So we are helpless without God. 
And why don't we want to serve God? Amen. God wants to anoint us. He wants to empower us to do a work for God. All you need to do is see God. Let God invest his power in you. Then you can go out and do exploits. Quit trying to be a wonder. But just be a servant of God. Our job as born again children of God is to go out and make disciples. He would endow us with power from on high. But you have to warn him. First seed who came to heaven, all this right, and the rest of it. He that are hungry and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. But now we, we, we satisfied with just a little. We had on to church Tuesday night. I'm tired. I ain't going Saturday night. Then when something happened, we want God to be there. But let's make up our mind. We want to be servants of God. That empowered to do a work for God. Read. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. All right, in the last days. Now this 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 was was coming. In the last days. Now they're telling me now. I've heard a preacher saying the other day, here in Texas, some of the school, they they don't hire policemen walk in the hall to make sure that no none of the kids mention the name of Jesus Christ. They're gonna put them in jail. They're gonna arrest them. Persecution is closer than we think. The same point, justice is not recognizing God. We're taking God out of everything. Amen. The devil is against the church, especially a church like this. Amen. What are you are you gonna compromise? If we compromise, we're going to be lost. I think it's about time that we need to take our stand. Amen. And let God endow us with power as never before. Where we can go forth through here and do explore. That's what happened to the disciples. Amen. The Bible said they testified they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they had to admit that they had been with Jesus. And the Bible said they turned the world upside down. I don't care how big a devil comes. If we get anointed enough with God, God will give us the victory. Amen. So we can't turn around because we turn around, we're going to hell. And we don't want to go that way. So why not empower me, Lord? Let me stand up. Let me. That's right. Amen. Am I making sense tonight? Yes, sir. Now, if we did it for Paul and Elijah and them, he can do us the same way. All it takes is seeking God. Right. Eli, Elijah was in the north. And Moses was in the, what do you call it? An north. But they were great men of God. Amen. Joshua was a great man of God. God is no respect to person. But he needs somebody that will see God, that will turn the plate over, pray that will see God when everybody else is playing. So this is what I want to talk about tonight. God's got a work for full gospel to do. Amen. And you are part of it. Amen. Why not let's stand together? Everybody can't do the same thing. But we, we can be a part. Just like Esther, God brought up to the king of Satan. God brought full gospel for a time as this. Amen? Amen? Don't you feel like God's hands on us? Amen? Amen? Amen. I do. Because I know well from once I came, I didn't have nothing. I had no friend. We didn't build this off of nobody. I just walked out and said, yes to God, obey God. And I'm still striving for that same thing. And I'm, as I was seeking the Lord last night, my mind was stirred about the 
just people come in here, pray the Lord, amen, and they accept, said accept Christ. And why are they? Amen. I want God, we're going to pray that God will church the heart of these people, that bring them on a conviction to the saving of their soul. I want to see people get saved like Paul got saved, like you and I got saved. Our mind is made up to go all the way with God. With God's stuff. They're in the church had their mind made up. Pray God, well, God, what type of persecution? Pray God, they stood. Yeah. You didn't hear tonight. I feel that you're the, you're the pillars of full gospel. I'm asking you, let's unite together. Let's pray and seek God. God can turn dollars upside down. He used this country to shake this whole nation. Amen. <clears throat> but we got to be willing to suffer, willing to endure, willing to go through. Amen. Now the Bible declares, praise God, in Matthew 7 and 13. Let's read that a little bit. Enter ye at the straight gate. Now the Bible, the Bible said, enter ye in at the straight gate. Now you can't walk around here crooked and do what you want and be a child of God. You're going to have to live the life. But it was Matthew, what is that? Matthew 11 and 28 says, take my yoke upon you and learn them. And these are the steps we're going to have to take. Do you want to be used of God? Take my yoke upon you and learn them. You got to be willing to be taught. That's where we got a Bible class. When we teach through the week, pray to God, the word of God, you have, man shall not live but bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Take my yoke upon you and learn, I mean, learn the ways of God. Seek God. You know why full gospel is where it is now? There's a lot of preachers that I preached with as a young man. In fact, I didn't start preaching until I was 30, but in that time, praise God, most of the people that I, I don't know where they are now. They weren't willing to listen to the vision. I had to make up my mind and go on off and leave them. I went to the church and prayed when they were at home sleeping, running around. A lot of you look at the church now. But do you know I spent many nights in the church by myself. I was a young man too, had a family. But I was hungry for God. Sometime I'd come in on Monday night and I'd stay in it the whole week fasting and seeking God. Why? Because I wanted the power of God in my life. I was hungry. I took money out of my life and I'd still do it. Praise God to support the work of the Lord. Because I want to see the work of God go on. Do you think, praise God, would you call me? Look at all these churches we have. Do you know majority of those churches? I bought them and paid for them from this church. To start to pray God, I'm a minister's friend. I want to see them go on. If I was selfish, I would not have did that. But I was trying to get the gospel out. Amen. Even praise God gave some of them down payments on cars. So they could go and. So I'm not a selfish person. I went all overseas because I was concerned about the work of God. But I realized America needs the gospel as bad as in the country I know of. Amen. America's in bad shape. Amen. Man, homosexuals are everywhere. And they're trying to teach our little kids and all of this mess and going on. We got a job to do. Amen. And the devil's not going to like us because we take a stand. But if we unite ourselves together, the devil can't stop us. Amen. I mean, I've been fought in this city. 
but I'm still standing. Amen. Amen. And God had greater things for us to do, but we need somebody that got their mind made up pregnant, that willing to sacrifice. And God anoint me and make me what you want me to be. Amen. To preach the gospel delivers. Brother, I've been in some places. All type of disease. And God let me go in there and come out without even catching any. I've had to deal with demons. But the Bible said, I give you power over. Oh, this is what you need to seek after the power of God. God put me here. We're going to work together. And we're going to do a work for God. Listen. I said this and I don't fall over and I still said it. The time is coming when they're going to take our exemption away from the church. To a certain extent, they're trying to control the church by that. But I wonder how many would real support this church if they come in here tomorrow and say, we're going to take the exemption away. It's something to think about. But I tell you what, when they do it, they're going to make one of the biggest mistakes they ever made in their life. Because they're going to put the church in the raw. And when they get in the raw, there won't be nothing they can do. Amen. But if there was a time to pray and see God, it's now. All right, Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye in, in, Enter the in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. And broad is the way. That lead to destruction. That lead it to destruction. Now you don't want to go that way. That's living any type life. Unconcerned. But we need to end in that straight gate. Read. Because straight is the gate. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the and way. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto which right. leadeth unto righteousness. And few there be that and, find and it. And few there be that find it. So you got to make up in your mind. This is something you'll have to do. I can't do it for you. Amen. We need to make up our mind to where we, we forget about all this different dress and everything else. Praise God. We just want to do the will of God. Amen. We're going to do whatever God gives us to do. Praise God. What's mine is yours, Lord. We'll support the work of God. We'll, we'll, we're going to do everything we can to support the work of God. We're going to carry this gospel. Amen. If Martin Luther King would do it without the power of God in his life, what about us? Amen. Amen. Read. Beware of false prophets. All right. Jesus warned us again, beware of false prophets. See, that's going to be a false prophet trying to hinder you and stop you. But you've got to make up in your mind. That you're going to go all the way. You, you're going to have to study the word of God. You're going to have to be powerful and be obedient to the gospel. Read. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. Which come to you in sheep clothing. But inwardly. But inwardly. They are raving wolves. They are raving wolves. You, there are a lot of deceivers out there. They're going to come in the name of Christ. Preaching in his name. So see you're going to have to know the difference. So this way you're going to have to seek God. The Bible said try the spirit. How are you going to try the spirit? By the word of God. Anytime some come to you, pray to God and tell you something and try to lead you with the word of God, you stop. You don't go that way. Read. Amen. You shall know them by their fruit. You, Jesus let you know how to know them. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes? Do of thorns? men gather grapes of thorns? Or figs of thistles? Say one thing about it, pray God. He ain't going to live holy. She ain't going to live holy. Right. Read. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree? But a corrupt tree. Bringeth forth evil fruit. Somewhere down the road, down the line, they, they're going to deviate from the truth. You have to stay with the word of God. Amen. Now listen, we see the signs of that. We see things happening right now. Amen. Our government is decaying. Amen. It's in bad shape. And the longer we sit around here unconcerned, but you know, we, we, we can pray and we can turn things. Amen. Amen. Brother, praise God, when the, the, the king here would 
kill Jane with the sword. The saints got together and prayed to put Peter in jail to do the same thing. He said, oh, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to pray for our preacher. And God, listen, do you know God can open the jails today just like he did then? But we got to believe God the way they believe. Amen. But it takes people that has their mind made up, going to shut all of this other stuff out and trust God with all their heart, all their mind and their soul. Make up your mind like Paul did, Peter and them did. God's no respect the person. You read testimonies of great women of God. I mentioned so many times I was a young lady pregnant. They say she never taught a lesson, never taught a Sunday school class, never preached a message. But she was a prayer warrior. And many evangelists sought her present in that country and just to come down and sit and pray and how God would move. God can take anything that was surrendered to him and use it. But I want you to know the gifts of the Spirit ain't no good without the fruits of the Spirit. Everybody's seeking the gifts, but the gift ain't no good without the fruit of the Spirit. Get me a 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men. Listen to what he said. Though I speak with the tongues of men. And angels. And angels. And have not church. And have not church. I am become a sounding brass. Don't care. Go ahead. Or a tinkling symbol. Or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy. Do I have the gift of prophecy? So you see, the, we got a lot of folks seeking after these gifts. Why? Because they won't be a show off or something big. But these gifts ain't no good without the fruit of the Spirit. So what you want to do is seek God for the fruit of the Spirit. And yield to God and let God have his way in your life. Amen. Now I, I'm going to close. I'm not going to keep going. But I'm stirred when I see what's happening in our country. When I look at the church, we, we got places that's packed out. And I'm not jealous of that. Folk preach for hours. They ain't preaching nothing that will bring deliverance. Amen. Listen, beloved, people are going to have to get delivered. You cannot walk in sin and practice sin and be a child of God. Now, I don't care what nobody say, how these people try to make like God is using them. God is not going to use an ungodly vessel. You got false. Jesus warned us about these false prophets. Take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. Then you begin to list the things that are going to take place. Praise God. Proud to the return of the Lord. I didn't read all of them, but when you see these things come to pass, look up your redemption draws now. So don't let folk laugh at you. Well, you you plain Jane, you this, that, and other. I'll tell this murder tonight, pray that our crowd look better than the other crowd on TV. Amen. No lipstick, no nothing. Pray. Man, that their skin and everything look beautiful. There's some beautiful looking young well, young ladies on TV. Amen. Amen. He beautified the meat with salvation. I'm going to see what I'm trying to get over to you tonight. Listen, beloved prayer. If we see God and man, the devil have no, no strength on this corner. Amen. Power of God be manifested in this place. All I do is ask you, let's pray and see God. And yield to God. Seek the fruit of the Spirit, not the gift of the fruits of the Spirit. Ask God to anoint us the more and be willing to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. Look how he used Peter and James and Paul, Stephen, Philip, others. The devil will tell you, oh, you're not, you're not sufficient. Let, let him use so and so. No, God can use you. Amen. Amen. He used deacons. Amen. He used the ordinary men's, ordinary women's. You can be one of those. But you have to deny self. Amen. And seek the will of God. 
And God can take you places you never dreamed of. Use you in many different places. How many got your mind made up? Saints, we got to get busy. Stand on your feet tonight.